Yay Networks. Hello, subscribers. <laughs> that was so not authentic at all. Uh, how are I you? I apologize. Hey, y'all. Welcome to This Is Life. Hi. My name is Heather. This is Cornelius. Ooh, child. That's it. So what do you want to talk about today, baby? Um, I think you said, oh, I forgot. I forgot. But, okay, so I'm going to throw this out there. If we seem a little distracted, it's not because of anything that's going on with you. It is the fact that I got into a trade uh, today that was not high probability at all. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I was going in to scalp. Mm -hmm. You probably don't know what that means, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. And it ended up reversing, which means that I was losing a lot of money. And right now we're trying to watch it so that I can go green and I can come out of this. My wife is shaking her head because I broke every rule that I have. But this yeah. is a learning lesson. So that's where we are right now. So we're also watching the trade. God bless. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like any help to learn how to trade, you can always reach out to the busy trader. I am not the person to help you because yeah. obviously right now you the know that all I do is gamble. Yes, the busy traders .com. I'm very particular about my high probability setup. She is very particular about and her high probability. My technical I am too. analysis has to be on point. On point. My technical analysis was on point earlier and then it got off point, but that's not my problem because the A stock market is racist. Gambly. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Child, y'all don't even understand. All I heard was, <gasps> babe, I think I got in the wrong trade. Babe. Yes, but we're, we're okay. We're, we're good. We're okay, there. so we're what are we going to talk there. about today? Uh, we're supposed to talk about um, timing. Yeah, God's timing. Trusting God's timing. Yeah, yeah. which is so hard because timing comes with trust. And I mean, it's so hard to trust nowadays. It's hard, it's hard to trust anything. Yeah. So the fact that you're like sitting around like, well, how do I trust? I trust, you know, <laughs> the timing I'm going to get married or yeah. the timing I'm going to have kids or especially yeah. if like you're trying, yeah. you're trying to have kids and... <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. You're trying to have kids, but it's not happening the way yeah. that you want it to. But yeah. that timing, it always kind of, oh, you know what? So there was a, there was a great example that um, I used to use way back when, but it's called, a, it's called the, uh, the slingshot effect. And pretty much what happens with the slingshot effect, like if you go outside, I don't, I don't know if you remember the old slingshot, but you had the, like the, the stick with like the rubber band in the middle of it and you put the, you put the stone inside of it. Well, I'll go. You go outside and you pull that back, and the, the thing is, if it if you pulled it back, you know, just by a little bit, the stone will fall like right there at your feet. It'll fall right there. But if you pulled it back all the way, or you pulled it back with as much you know intensity of pressure as possible, then the rock will go, the stone will go faster and further. And so I think a lot of times we're trying to wait for timing, mm -hmm. and it seems like we're going backwards. That's real. It seems like I'm not moving ahead or it could seem like everybody else is going further along than I am. Yeah. But you can't be confused because the, it could be possibly that it does look like they're springing forward faster, but they're not going to go that far yeah. because they haven't gone back far enough. And so when the slingshot effect is you're going back, you're going back, you're going back, you're going back, and you believe that going backwards, you're going to eventually spring forward. Yeah, no, I agree. Um I know that I went through a season. I remember I graduated from Michigan State. I moved off to college, and I just really felt like I wondered, like, God, what do you have for me? It seemed like so many of my friends were getting married. So many of my friends were in long-term relationships, and I felt like, God, when are you going to, like, hook me up? Like, where's yeah. my husband? Where's my kids? And it makes sense because when I graduated college, I was 21, and my husband was 18, and well, we didn't have to throw that in. And I would that's, have never. That's, that's what you call I would have never looked his way because he was 18, right? And he was just graduating. You were graduating college when I was graduating high school. High school or you're graduating I was graduating high school. high school and you was graduating college. Exactly. So I'm sorry. We're not looking at, we're not checking for nobody that's that's young like that, right? So it's so funny to me that I'm up here stressing out God about when is it my time to meet my man and you were, you know, you were doing your, your senior year stuff. I'm like, but I'm like <laughs> H-Town. Like I knew, I knew I was ready. The, the crazy thing is though, our daughter was asking, like, remember she was asking questions about marriage the other day? Yeah. And she was just like, well, how long did it take daddy to know that you were, you were it, you were the one. And he was like, within five minutes, 
of yeah. meeting mommy, I knew right away. And she's like, that's right. He's not taking me on, what did she say? She's like, he's not taking me on 52 dates before he finally tells me that I'm, I'm gonna, he's going to marry me. He's going to need to know. I was like, dang, sister soldier. <laughs> right. Calm down. Do you see where like, you are eight? <laughs> like, it's okay. And then she She's brought up one home. of the kids. She was like, "Yeah, you know." And this guy, like, I'm not really sure. You did. You did a great job. You were like, "Well, babe, you don't have to make a decision right now. Don't. Like, you can, you can move. Like, you don't have to." Because she was, she in her head, she had already built out a whole life, her whole life with this person, and it was just like, you don't have to do that. Yeah, but she's like, I just don't like his last name. And yes, like, that's what she said. And I was she like, well, didn't queen, like his last name. Um, you don't have to choose because you're in third grade. You're in third um, grade. And we don't push marriage like that in our home. We just say, you know, no. when you get older in due season and due time. And she asked us about kissing and hugging before we got married and stuff like that. She and did. We just said we didn't kiss till our wedding day. She's like, well, I want to do that. And I said, well, if you want to do that, we support you. You yeah. know what I mean? It wasn't something like we, we yeah. were pushing her to say yeah. this is what you have to do because mommy and daddy did. Yeah. It was one of those things where we just said, hey, this is what we did. And yeah. she was like, oh, I want to do that, too. But yeah. to impose, it was something we talked about. In order for you to, Im- if you impose a rule, yeah. then you have to set up a system of governance. Yeah. And so, like, to make that a rule for our children to say, this is what you have to do, then now yeah. we have to create a whole system that is going to ultimately govern the rule that we're trying to create. And it's just, in my opinion, it's not worth it. Yeah. So allowing them to be able to make these decisions for themselves because they probably are influenced either way by us, I think yeah. it's I think is extremely healthy. Definitely. But even telling her who's eight, who has her whole life planned. She has her whole she's, life she's planned. She's named her I'm kids like, London yeah. and Paris, her twin girls. She's having twins. I'm she's like, having well, there's twins. no twins anywhere in our lineage. There's none on either side. There's no that, there's no that, twins yeah, in there's our lineage. There's none that we know of. None whatsoever. Um, but Tay has her life planned out. She does. And so... I feel like so many people are the same way. Yeah. Like they have their life planned out and they're just like, all right, God, by 23, I want to be married. Cause that was my thing. By 23, I wanted to be married. 25, I wanted to have a kid, just one. And then, you know, 27, I wanted to add a couple more. Right. So I had all these plans and I remember putting dates on the calendar and I, and telling God, like, God, this is your, this is your deadline. Like, I need you to rescue me. <laughs> I need you to help me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I didn't I didn't have any of that. I didn't I didn't care. Oh. I didn't care. You got out of it? I'm sorry. I'm I'm in a trade, so hopefully we're getting out of it. It was red. What, as soon as I sold? It bounced back. It it bounced briefly, but you're still up 7 for some reason. That's weird. Okay. So, what, we can let it hold. Did you did you sell out all of them? No. Do you want oh. me to? Um no, if it's if it's still going green then let it go. But I didn't sorry I didn't I didn't that. Oh, it's okay. I mean, it's fine. But I didn't have any of that stuff. I grow. I grew up. I didn't really think didn't about. Really, it. I didn't think about any of that stuff. But look at Logan. I asked Logan. I was Logan like, doesn't even know what he's going to wear tonight for bed. <laughs> Logan does not think about anything in the future. Logan lives he doesn't. He doesn't. in the moment. Logan is. Stressed, I want to go stressful. outside and play football, and yeah. that's all he thinks about. That's all he cares about. Yeah. The only thing he thinks about in future tense is what he's going to eat. Yeah. And what am I going to eat? That's the only thing he cares about. Is consequently, food. that's also. Yeah. Only thing I think about too is that's accurate. I'm eating a meal, thinking about what my next meal is going to be. Yeah, so that's, that's what I think about, and I, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. That's pretty accurate, but it's it's really cool to me just to see the dynamic. But it goes to show, especially for women at a young age, that we're like groomed to have to to have. The, we want the answers. We want to know what it's going to be. And I've realized that there's truly seasons under the sun for every area of your life. There's seasons. So there's a time to rest. There's a time to date. There's a time to marry. There's a time, you know, there's a time where you'll be a widow, right? There'll be, there's a time that you're going to die. There's a time for everything under the sun. You can't control that. I know you want to control it. I know you have everything lined up, but you can't control your life. And I think there's just an idea where we think that we can control our future. Yeah. Right. We we have control. You don't. God is truly in control. And the question is, will we submit to his timing? Will we submit to his ways and say, all right, God, I'm going to lay down this area because I feel like we make an idol out of these areas in our life. Yeah. Right. Where, where it becomes so big to us. It's bigger than God. It's bigger than everything. If your job becomes bigger than God, if having kids or or a spouse is just so big, so big, so big. It's like God's almost like, why would I give you something that you're going to idolize? Yeah. That, that you're going to bow down and worship. Like, I want you to trust me. Like, I want your whole heart, right? So I've learned 
even now I'm believing God for stuff. I don't feel like it ends, <laughs> right? It's oh, like, it doesn't. you know, you, you're in high school and then it's like, what college am I going to go to? And, you know, what's the timing like for that? And then you go to college, you're like, okay, oh, hey, am I going to graduate in four years? And then am I going to get married? You start looking around, all your friends are getting married. And then after that, it's like, okay, am I getting married? All right, what about kids? And it's just one thing after the next to stress you out. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there, there's, there's so much to talk about this. We're going to come right back to this subject right after this break. All right, y'all. What New Year's purchases would you put on a credit card? Just think about it. Okay. Now, why is building a credit card so important to starting off your New Year right? Right? We are in a new year. We used to build our credit. Now, no matter how you're starting off the new year, um, when you use the Secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can build your credit scores with on-time payments for everyday purchases. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I had really low credit when I was in college and I finally found a credit card that would approve me so I could build my credit. But I would have rather gone this direction, babe. Absolutely. Right? So I could build my credit that way. And there's like no annual fees. There's no interest, nothing. It's amazing. And you can also, um, you know, with the, with the chime credit builder, you can get paid up to two, uh, two days early with direct deposit into uh, the checking account. Oh, they have fee-free overdraft with SpotMe. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a, a qualifying direct deposit. You have access to 60,000-plus fee-free ATMs. You can also send and receive money. So the idea here that I don't have options, that's just out. Chime is giving you the option uh, that you need. So start building your credit. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash L-W-T-L. That's Chime.com slash L-W-T-L. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by V-Bank Corp. N-A or Stride Bank. N-A members FDIC. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal and over-the-counter advance fees may apply. Call 1-844-244-6363 for details. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. So, yeah, so um, we're back. Um, but trusting God's timing, I think, is, is so important. And I think you mentioned something that we've talked about before, but that's control. Yeah. We want to be in control. We do. We like control. We do. We and I, I And I don't. OK, so. I'm not seeking to make this a women like this thing, but do you feel like as a woman and with a lot of your baddie friends? Um, baddie, you know you a 10. She a baddie with her baddie friends. Yes. I didn't know you knew those lyrics. Yeah. I thought Taylor. that was going to be one of those things. That were gonna be. Well, Taylor there you go. taught me. Okay. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so, like, so do you feel like that is something that, women struggle with a lot the control thing Oh, a thousand percent i struggle with control every day of my life yes you do and then so and i'm not i'm not Maybe. i'm not a, i'm not agreeing no no no, no. I, I was I, what i was saying what i was see what happens in life fact, is I need to order some food keep going that I'm listening. um you know no i mean seriously because we we know we know biblically Biblically, the take it back to Genesis. Biblically, the one of the one of the consequences of the curse was that this was that Eve or the woman would always want to she'd have a desire to rule over her husband. AKA control that man. Yeah. And it's not only just controlling him, but it's also controlling the household. It's also controlling how things go. It's trying to control the children. It's and then that gets into a deeper set of control because that gets into, you know, when a mother henpecks. And I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that about it. I'm not throwing that at you. But I'm just saying, like, that's no, when baby. a mother starts to henpeck and she's like, these are my kids and I can't let them get out of my side. And I have to know everything they're doing. And I got it's like that consistent control. Yeah. You want yeah. anything from Planta or no? no oh, God, no. Ugh. But we uh, I'm sorry. Planta is like a vegan place. And I'm sorry. I support I support meat eaters. Um. Uh. Uh, so, but it's like that, that control thing, it's like, it all has to be a certain way. And if yeah. it ever is not that way, then you get frustrated and you get disappointed. You get angry because it, I mean, think about it. Disappointment means that you had an appointed time that you missed. Yeah. So when you're disappointed, 
that means that you had an appointed time and then you went past that time and now you're no longer at that time anymore. So, you know, it's real though, babe. Taking a step back and just saying, it's so real, huh? That's real, baby. Yeah, taking a step back and just yeah. saying, listen, like I recognize. I want it to be this way, but I have to I have to loosen control. I, th I think that it's easy, easier said than done. I feel like if you look at Taylor, and she's such a good example, I think, for for us, because he sees how she is and how different she is from the boys and how similar she is to me. Right. Does she not constantly think about control all the time? Right. Like this morning, the kids have this competition of who can get dressed quicker right? And, and come downstairs faster because they were struggling to wake up for school. So now they both set their alarms for like five and they're showered and downstairs at like 530. So they were all downstairs and Taylor was upset that Logan won, but she said, and guess what? He's going to be tired because he has a long day ahead of him. He has football. He has this. He's going to be so exhausted by the end of the day because he woke up 30 minutes earlier than me. Like the way that she's planning and thinking, she's like, he's got this today that he's got that today. He's got this. And so it's like, no matter what the narrative is, Taylor still tries to control it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, it's in us. And I feel like it's in our nature. And it's almost like to tell somebody like a lion, like, Hey, be soft and peaceful today. If you see a herd of giraffes, you know what I mean? Like be soft and peaceful. It's almost like what? It takes so much time for us to rewire our brain because we think differently than you guys. Yeah. For yeah. you, it's so simple. And I'm so thankful for you, babe, because you helped me balance, especially parenting. Like, your parenting game is bomb. Like, you literally bring me back. You help me with the kids when it comes to not being so controlling. Like, hey, babe, if you want Logan to open up, you're going to have to stop being so controlling. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and Is we, he going to shut down? In the car today, um, I played my worship music very loud. And then I turned it down. And I said, I'm sorry. Is this too loud? And he's like, no, no, it's fine. So I was like, okay, I still, I was praying my worship, playing my worship, speaking in tongues, laying hands on him, praying on him as he was going to school. Wow. <laughs> and so um, I told him, I said, I know you're human and I don't expect for you to be perfect. And we're all going to make mistakes. Mommy makes mistakes every day of her life. What did he say? And we're all going to make mistakes. And he was like, you're right. Thanks, mom. Yeah. And I was like, yay. That's a, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a big step. And I'm, I'm so glad that you, that you did that. With Thanks him. to our combo. Yeah. I'm so glad you did that with yeah. him because like, and what she's talking about with our, our combo is that when, again, I go back to this point, if you create a law, because law isn't bad, but if you create a law, if you create a rule then you have to create a system that is going to ultimately govern that rule. You have to, yeah. you have to establish something. So like, yeah. for instance, the speed limit is 60. Well, now you have to create a system that says, if you break the law, then yeah. this happens. You, you get a, you get a ticket. If you go 20 miles over the speed limit, then yeah. that's now a super speeder ticket and you could be taken to jail yeah. and you could be stripped of your insurance blah, blah, blah. So what, the reason why we're having that conversation, I was saying, Hey, making a rule isn't bad, but the problem comes in you have to ask yourself, what do I desire more from my children or from my spouse or whomever? Do I desire more of them to 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 have, you know, authentic conversation with me where they don't feel ashamed to say whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Or do I desire them more to to have this this vision or this visual of perfection? Because yeah. if he lied to you once, guess what? He's going to lie to you again. Yeah, and then it's just just to protect himself, just to yeah. protect himself, because yeah. he he does not want to feel shame from somebody who's important in his life. Yeah, and so I course. was sharing with her. I was like, "Yeah, he tells me everything." Yeah, he tells me everything because he knows his dad. I'm gonna be like, "I'm like for real, bro." Like that's crazy. See, Tay tells me everything too. But Tay is also a hider. Yeah, Tay's a Tay's a, and and she she tries to please. Yeah, and so you know with Logan, it's like I don't you know. I'm like, bro, for real? Like, and we'll go, we'll go back and forth. And then I'll be like, yo, so what you think about that? And he'd be like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if I like it. And I'm like, yeah, I ain't really like it either. Like, yeah. it's just one of them things, like doing the things yeah. for me. He was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I would agree, bro. Like, like just, I see. Yeah. you know what I mean? No, and so it's just good. throwing that's it out there. Parenting. And he's just, he's just like, yeah. he's like, okay, cool. Okay. I'm green again. But um, Thank you, Jesus. I'm thinking like, like you really have to look at your... At your overall, was it grid? 
What? Look how much you made. I made six dollars today. I'm so thankful because yeah. I was down two hundred. But um, <laughs> whatever, whatever. I don't care. I was just trying to be green. But anyway, like, if you if you really want to get out of this control thing, like you 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 have to relinquish it. Well, I think the first step is realizing that you are a control freak. Yeah, you're controlling. Like you're controlling, and people around you only do what you say. Like just to your please children you. or your even your spouse. Just to please you because they don't want the tornado that will come out when you yeah. freak out. Yeah. Right? They'll never show they'll never show their humanity to you. Yeah. Remember we had that conversation about PKs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. About and P, a PK is a is a pastor's kid, a preacher's kid. And we always, you know, they always wonder, like, I wonder, you know, why the case is that preachers' kids become wild. And it's like, well, typically, in the, if that household had a bunch of laws, a bunch of rules that were, you know, we could say they're biblical, whatever it is, then that child would always give off the the perception of yeah. I'm good, but behind the but then you know yeah. it finally comes out that oh the pastor's daughter is pregnant. Well, yeah. how could that be? I told her she's not supposed to have sex if she got married. And I told her she's not supposed to do that. Yeah. I told her she's not supposed to do that. But you didn't. You never set up a true system of governance. And yeah. she never showed you your her, her, her humanity. Yeah. yeah. So she no, wanted to have true. sex and she wanted to learn about sex. She she learned about it from somebody else because she yeah. didn't have to get it from you. I definitely had the sex talk with Tay. Yeah, she think- asked me. She was like, what? I have to do that? She was like, wait, you and daddy did that three times? Dude, a whole lot more <laughs> I was three like, times. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> ciao. Yeah. But anyway, right. we're going to take a commercial break and be right back <laughs> after these messages from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Give BetterHelp a try today. Y'all, can I tell you how much I love therapy? Can we talk about it, babe? Can we talk about it? Come on. It has changed my life. Yeah. I go to a therapist on a regular basis. It's like a facial for my soul, right? And I feel like, you know, in life as a mother, I get so busy. I get pulled in so many different directions all the time. And just taking that moment to take care of myself and do that self-care has changed my life, and it feels like it's made me a better mom, a better wife, a better yeah. friend, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we've talked about therapy so much, and BetterHelp is the fact that they have a system of and a network of therapists, professional licensed therapists that can help you with many different stages of your life, you know, whether it's you, know, you can't go to sleep, you got family issues, you got relationship issues, just somebody who can be able to add verbiage to your pain. Like it's so important yeah. and it, it's just great. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist. And here's a great thing. If you don't like the therapist, you can switch at any time for yeah. no additional charge. So learn uh, to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Lindsay's yeah. today to get 10% off your first month. That's better help. H E L P dot com slash Lindsay's L I N D S E Y S. We're back. And I am just elated about a lot of things, but <laughs> control is one of those yeah, big control, things. And, you got to let it go. And I think we want to control our futures and our life. And, and so everybody else. what we do is we strive. And if you're like me and you can be type A and a perfectionist, it's like you go hard on work. You go throw yourself into it, right? Because the, you have an idea. If I throw myself into this, then I'll become successful. And as long as I'm successful, I'm in control. Yeah. And then I won't be poor anymore and I won't be back where I used to be. Yeah. So I, as long as I throw myself into it and work nonstop and go nonstop and then what happens when you don't get the promotion? What happens when the deadline comes and goes yeah. and things don't work out in your life? And I wonder if so many of us have our ladders up against the wrong building in life. Come on, you know what good. I mean? Yeah. Like you have your ladder up because you're trying to force God's hand in that relationship, in that job or whatever yeah. the case is. And it's like you keep climbing this ladder of life and you're, you're frustrated. And it's like we have to stop and say, am I on the right ladder right now? You yeah. know what I mean? Like what's happening? And maybe you are on the right ladder, but you're just not content with but where God up has against it. the wrong tree. Yeah, come on. Seriously, though, maybe you're just not content with your portion and what you have. I've learned to stop and smell the roses of my life. My life is beautiful. My husband yeah. is a bomb. My kids are amazing. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. 
I trust God's timing. And I think I used to struggle with that because I was always striving for more and more and more, mm-hmm. but you'll never be satisfied. There's there always going to be this greed inside of you that says you can't enjoy today because you know, you need to strive for more. Yeah. And then I realized one day, like all more, I don't need more. I have everything I need right now. My family's healthy. We're good. You know, yeah. I feel like God gave us a solution for control and discontentment. Yeah. I am confident that you do not want to hear this because your flesh will rebel against it, but it's called Sabbath. Um, so God, from what Genesis tells us, he worked for six days and then he took the seventh day yeah. to rest. And so Sabbath in his purest form is the most accurate definition of faith. Yeah. Because Sabbath says, if I do nothing, I trust and believe that he's, that he, that he can do everything. Yeah. It's, it's literally taking a step back. So when we say relinquish control, we're not telling you not to do certain things because even God worked for six days, but it's taking time. It's taking the day, taking that time away to pull back and say, you know what, God, I've done everything I know to do. Yeah. And now I trust you. You know, so you're saying, oh, well, I hear what you guys are saying, but you're already married and I want to be married. Okay. So you're on six different dating apps. You're going out to all these dates. You may be getting some free food, maybe putting a little, you know, maybe giving some reward on the side because of the food, getting some dessert at home, all that, all those kind of. Throwing it around a little bit. You're throwing around a little (laughs) bit. I mean, you know, loosey booty, let it go. And then, so you're, you're doing all of that stuff and it's still not working. And so you're thinking you need to get on another dating app or now you're yeah. like, well, maybe to go to church to find this person or maybe or to go did, here. Or you ask people, where did you find your where spouse? Where did you find your spouse? Yeah. Maybe I can go to the mall or maybe if I do this yeah. and they're having a festival, maybe I can find yeah. this. And maybe. And so now you're going to places, not even for fun or for enjoyment. You're going to places because you're trying to look for something. Yeah. And God's just saying, listen, like rest. And in fact, that's what happened with us because mm-hmm. I was I was dating this girl who I legit thought this girl's gonna be my wife mm-hmm. without it without a without Which is question. crazy because y'all was toxic. It was an extremely toxic relationship. It was an extremely extremely toxic relationship. But I felt like I didn't. I felt like I didn't want to get to know anybody else. Of course, I mean, you know what I mean. Y'all were together for so long, it and I, I knew her mom. Yeah. I knew her grandmother. Yeah. I knew her uncle. Yeah. Like I was there when her dad died. Yeah, in Florida. Yeah, drove them down there. Like. You know, me and her, we laid on the floor together because there was nowhere else for us to sleep. We, we yeah. laid on the floor together, you know, and I comforted like I was there for her. Yeah. And so I was, that was like, like your high school crush kind of thing. It was. It, yeah. I mean, in fact, it was like even when I was in high school, I remember the first time I saw her. I remember telling one of the guys with me, I was like, yo, I want to date her one day. And he was like, well, you ain't going to date her like blah, blah, yeah. blah. But I ended up, you know, it, it was it was a great yeah. situation. But then it was like after that, after the end, it, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm done. I remember telling God, like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. It yeah. is what it is. Like, boom. And then it was a short time later, you came along. You met this baddie. And I was like, yo, like, but <laughs> I mean, but legit, like I did everything I knew to, I, I yeah. knew to do. And then finally, yeah. when I threw up my hands and said, you know what, God, you got it. That's when it was like, oh, boom, 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 boom. I literally boom, was boom, like, boom, boom. screw it. Like I got to that point, like rock bottom where I was like, screw trying, screw looking. I worked down on Wall Street and I had a thing for guys in suits. So I would like go out and just like window watch. I'd be sitting there <laughs> watching. Never heard this story before. I know. I, I, know. I, I had a thing for guys with suits, right? So when I met you, you had a suit. It's oh, so funny. I used funny. to wear suits all the time. All the time. So I had a thing for guys with suits. So I would like grab my lunch and I'd go outside right on Wall Street and there'd be so many people in suits and I'd be like, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Set but you do for one. Do for one. Come dollar. on. And I'd just be like, you know, Lord, like, Oh, is he it? Is he it? Because guys would look at me and they'd come talk to me and I'd be like, God, is this it? And he'd be like, nope, nope, nope. And I used to be like, what? Like, what is happening? And I didn't know. Like, I'm on here Wall Street, you know, at Wall Street looking around. Meanwhile, my husband's in Atlanta, a whole nother state. Oh, another state. And it's almost like I can't control that. You would you would have never walked by me on Wall Street. Never. You know what I mean? Ever never. in life. I would never go up there just for, for fun or Never, right. I wouldn't live there. I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't be there at all. Actually, I have an itch in my spirit, so I'm gonna start trading for a New York trip. And for you us. can and you can Maybe. scratch it. What us? Oh my 
Gosh. You have to come with me and be my support. Oh my gosh. That place, it just gives, every time when I land in New York City, or even if I land outside of New York City, I'm just like, God, get me on the safest thing out of here as soon as you can. Just keep me safe oh until my. I can leave. And right now, New York City is insane. All right. So I love NYC and I really miss it. But anyways, that's besides the point. But it's like, I remember saying, God, I'm so tired of dating here. Yeah. I swear you have to drop my husband from the sky. Like literally because, I drew I dropped from the sky. <laughs> literally. I was like, there I see no options. Even the guys and I went to a mega church at the time and I dated guys at my church and I felt like, okay, you're saying they're not my husband either. And now I'm frustrated because I don't understand. And I almost tried to force God's hand. And I didn't know I had already met my husband and I'd walked by you for like two or three years. I never met you before. You always tell the story. I never met you, babe. Baby, the Lord had your eyes you. covered. I do not remember Babe, walking we, past you. Uh, do you remember the pep rally we had after the old leaders I left? Remember, I remember the pep rally, but Hold I don't on. And all the leaders had to stand up and say something about their organization. I that, remember that. I stood up and I, and I was representing the dance Let me ministry. Ask you, did I ever look up? Yes. I looked up. Yes. Most times I didn't. Most times I didn't pay you anybody any attention. You I were was, typing. I was typing. And most times the yeah. typing wasn't even, it was mostly just me just going like this. <laughs> what? Yeah, I didn't. I, I was. I was a horrible. Like when I say a horrible assistant, really? Oh my god, I was How did terrible. You last four years. That's what. That was the point. The point, whole point was he was like, I don't understand. Like you, it would be terrible. Wow. Horrible. He was like, he was like, so give, you have the notes, and I'm like, notes, and he's like, weren't you taking notes? And I you was were like, legit oh. taking notes. This I wasn't. Was, y'all, it was a two hour pep rally. It was anyways, a two hour pep rally. I didn't have. Any anyways, notes. long story short, it's just like. I, but even then, I didn't think, oh, this is my husband. I did not think that, right? I wasn't, I wasn't thinking that. I don't remember. I don't, I, the, only, the first time I remember seeing you was when I was getting my hair cut. Yeah. That's what I remember. I was getting my hair cut at this the was, Hilton. This was like three years was before it Hilton we met. Yeah, it was Hilton. It was the Hilton. Getting my hair cut. Not, please not share that story. No, no, no. He, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was getting my hair cut. Oof. You walked in and I was like, I said something to the guy who's cutting my hair and he was like, ah, we both laughed about it. Yeah. And then you left. Thank you. I remember. Not, I remember thank seeing. Thank you for not sharing that full story. Yes, I remember. I remember. I remember seeing. I remember seeing. That was my first time. I remember seeing. Okay, you. it's fine. It's fine. But I was there with an an older woman that, and she walked in front of me, and you referenced her, the older woman who was like in her fifties. But anyways, long story short, you can't control God's timing. You can't. Like He literally opens your womb. <laughs> you can't control when you're going to get pregnant because He literally has to place the baby there, right? Mm -hmm. People always ask me, oh, Heather, what about IVF? Okay, if that's how God going to bring your baby into the earth, get IVF. then get Who IVF cares? if that's how if that's how we bring your baby in. But even then, you can't control that Yeah, because God still has to call that baby to the earth. Yeah, I mean, people are like, well, what about, what about dating apps? Like, I mean, dude, be safe. Be safe. Meet the people. Like, whatever yeah. it is. But have, like, you don't, have peace. I you feel like you know, need to have some type of peace in your yeah, people spirit. Are, people ain't got no peace. That's what I'm saying. People, I, it's okay to do the six-day thing. Do the work thing. Yeah. Do what, do all you know to do. Yeah. But then at the end of it, I'm taking my hands off. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's how we do it. But y'all, we appreciate y'all being with us, man. We love you. We have been rocking out with y'all for a long time. Make sure that you subscribe <laughs> to this podcast. Yo, tell your family, your friends, be like, yo, did y'all yes. hear about this podcast? It's called it This Is, is Life amazing. with Heather and Cornelius. It's dope. Man, we love y'all though. God bless y'all. Introduces. We out this uh, piece. Peace.